na początek chciałem się jeszcze wciąć w swoją ten... Chciałem powiedzieć, jak ktoś mieszka w Poznaniu albo okolicach, to mamy e, Poznań Python Programmers Group i spotykamy się raz w miesiącu, w, najczęściej w centrum coworkingowym z w okolicach 20 zawsze ogłaszamy to na Google Plusie, na, w tej grupie właśnie. Więc jak ktoś jest zainteresowany, to, to mógłby się na przykład zapisać tam albo co. Dobra. So this is a lightning talk I've given on EuroPython already, so maybe some of you have seen it already. So uh, one of the most common questions that pops up on, on the IRC, on the Python PL IRC channel is how to prevent users from seeing my code because I have this application that I'm selling and I don't want them to, to be able to, to modify it or, or to see what's inside. And this is really a hard question because it's, it's, it's the answer to the wrong question, right? You, you, you have legal protection of your code, no matter if, if, you, if you, I don't know, uh, if you protect it in, in some way or not. But the guy was insisting, so I said, you know, why don't you zip it up? So you, you can uh, make a main, uh, dunder main dunder.py, uh, which is the entry point to your application, uh, zip it up, and uh, that zip file is an executable Python script still, because Python can run zipped code with no problem. You can also put all your assets, all your images, and, and anything you need inside that zip file and access it. There are ways for that. I'm not going to talk about this now. But he said, OK, but then people will see that it's a zip file. OK, then change extension to, to .py or whatever. OK, but they are using Linux. And it doesn't, if they use a file command on it, it will still tell them that it's a zip file. So I was thinking, OK, how does the file command work? It looks at several first bytes of the file and looks at its database and compares it and says, OK, this looks like this kind of file. But zip files are strange. The index of a zip file is at the end of the file, not at the, the beginning. So you can put anything in front of a zip file and it's still a valid zip file. So I said, OK, put anything in there. You can put a GIF image. So it will display as a GIF and you can run it. <laughs> but then I started thinking, OK, uh, what if we make a, another Python program and put that Python program in front of that zip file? You know, then if you look at the file, it looks something like this. There is a normal Python program at the top, and then there is some trash that you can ignore, or even you can put a byte zero somewhere in there, then some text editors will even don't show you, will, will not show you this, this crap at the end. So, because zero is uh, for the end of the string in C, and they have this back. Uh, so you have effectively something that looks like one Python program, but actually runs the other Python program, because this will run the zip file, not the code that you have in there. So this is uh, a way of making Trojans. Uh, but please don't use it for anything malicious. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you see some funny characters in, in, your, in the Python files that you are supposed to run that you got from someone, remember that there is this thing in there. And there are probably some other things that you could run into. So. Just short, there are other things to do fun, funny stuff. You can write a custom importer, and then, for example, write all your Python in XML files and have it uh, converted into uh, Python bytecode by the importer. There are guys who did their own encoding. Like you can define your own character encoding, and then in your Python file, you just put this uh, coding foo comment and it will use that custom encoding. And you can do anything in that encoding. 
and uh, stuff like that. So thank you. <laughs>